Okay, this is the uh, Fluke 62 Max Plus infrared thermometer. I'm going to show you what it came with first and then explain some of the features and all that. Um, first off, we've got the thermometer itself. And it came with a carabiner that clips through this hole that's built into the base of it so you can attach it to your belt or uh, secure it to a tool bag or, or a box even. And they said this thermometer has been drop tested to a yard. I wouldn't advise just dropping it, but supposedly it's pretty durable that way. So that's good to have. Um, the case itself, the thermometer is, is, has a rubberized cover all the way around it. it it doesn't come off, unlike some of their other thermometers, but uh, which gives it a nice grip. You know, you can the entire housing. The only area, in fact, that's really not rubber covered, of course, is the uh, trigger, and then uh, this hard plastic here, and then, of course the display. But the buttons even are, are rubber, so that's that's nice. It gives you a good grip ability, and it also comes with a printed manual here. It's in multiple languages. Um, most of what's in it is. There is some writing in it that, that's in there which just has the technical information and how to use it is largely photos. But still that's a nice thing to have. And uh, there's all that. So that's really what comes in. Also comes in a clamshell case that you don't even really need to use scissors to open it. just It pops open by hand. So that's a nice way to be able to get it out of the packaging. And I'll show you what it has here on the back. You have um, three buttons. This one's cell which means select and then you have have an up and down button and I'll show you how to use that. That's for only one purpose. I'll get to that. And then I have set. So anyway, here's how you use it. I'm going to turn it on for a moment. And now you can see it says hold and then max and then EMS. Now EMS stands for emissivity. It's, it turns itself off automatically after I think it's seven seconds by the way. So anyway, I'll do that again. I'm going to show you the settings first. So. When you first get these, by the way, they default to uh, Celsius scale. Um, the lasers aren't on, which are what you use to target the uh, what you're checking. That's that's off. That the lasers are off by default, and the display's uh, backlight is also off by default. So, just so you know, when you first get these, you'll probably want to turn those three things on to switch it from Celsius to Fahrenheit and uh, turn the backlight on, and also have the lasers on. Surprising those aren't on by default, but they're easy to turn on. So anyway, I'll show you how you get to those. So you've got to do to get to the settings is push the trigger really quick, and then uh, do it again. anyway, EMS by the way down there you see in the corner stands for emissivity, and I'll go into that at the end here. So first off, you say you hit the set the cell button. It goes from max to min to average to diff. That's for the temperature. So you can check the difference between, uh, the, it, it defaults to max on this setting in the corner, but you can also set it to check for the minimum. And that what that means is while you're scanning and holding the button in, it will show you the maximum temperature down in the corner and then the current temperatures in the big numbers. So, um, Or you can switch to min scale and it will show what the minimums uh, that you check. You can do that after you've checked it. And, and then it also has average and then it will show the difference between the high and the low. So that's kind of nice. So you know, I'm moving on to the next scale. So I'll max, min, average, difference. Okay, now you have light. You select that. You see how there you have the select. You switch it between the off and on. L-I-T-E. That's how they abbreviated it. So anyway, you've got that. Then back to here. LAS, L-A-S, that stands for laser. That's what I was talking about with the laser. So by default, it comes this way, off. So you want to enable it by selecting on. And then you have this alarm, which allows you to have an alarm for high or the low setting. So I've got to turn it back on. It got away from me. I have to keep a hand on it for every now and then. Anyway, you have alarm, high, high, off, or low. I'll just keep doing that to keep it on. And um, that way you can actually have it give you a, a signal when you get over a certain high temperature or a certain low temperature which might come in handy if you're wanting to know uh, the temperatures you're checking or above a certain level it will alert you right away. Of course you have the low as I was saying here. Now for this setting here this is important. This is emissivity and uh, what that allows you to do is change it for certain um, 
substances you you may, may be checking with this because emissivities are different for each surface you're going to check. Like steel has one emissivity, um, shiny steel has another, stainless has another, aluminum has another, uh, drywall, wood, you name it. They're going to have different emissivities and what that means is they have a kind of a reflective quality that allows you to get a if you don't have it set properly you won't get an accurate reading with this. It's a very accurate thermometer um, supposed to be plus or minus like one half of a degree so that's really good but unless you have your emissivity set properly it won't give you really good fitting. It defaults to 0 0.95 for emissivity by the way and that works really well for most surfaces but there are tables that have emissivities for you know hundreds of different surfaces so I'll show you that in a moment but I mean, that's how you change it use the up and down arrow to change it and I don't know what the max you can set it to but it's it's in the double digits I guess and then you can also drop it down as well I think like for instance gravel of all things as I recall was like a 0 0.28 so I mean, there's that so I'll switch from emissivity to the next setting and here's where you slip between Fahrenheit and Celsius scale you see there Fahrenheit Celsius most people, at least in the U.S., want Fahrenheit. And the last setting, now, this setting here had me puzzled for the longest time, and I couldn't understand what it meant. And the manual doesn't explain it that very well either, because all it does is give you a pictorial representation of what it means. And the pictorial representation just shows you holding the trigger in, and that shows a clock with, with showing 10 minutes elapsing, and then that's all it shows. What, that, what I found out after going on the web and looking at it was what trig means it just allows the unit to shut itself off if the trigger is held in for 10 minutes or longer so that might be handy if you're say had it in a toolbox or tool bag and something got up against it and it pushed it in and and it didn't release and that would prevent it from running down the battery so that's what that's for I think that should be enabled by default so I have enabled it but anyway you can select it here and now back to the setting I'll show you how it works really quickly um, it's got two lasers that come out of it, you see out of the front, and then the, in the middle is the infrared sensor that actually checks the temperature. So the lasers allow you to target it. So I'll show you at this table. You see where the lasers are, and you know what point exactly you're checking because it's directly between the lasers. And the lasers get farther apart as you move it away, and you'll notice they also rotate slightly. Um, there's some there's some purpose for why they rotate, but either way you know that what you're checking is between those so that's the other thing is you, with more accurate readings you know down to a pinpoint you've got to get much closer than you would from others but that uh, allows it to uh, tell you exactly where you're checking and I think it has a ratio of, I think it's 1 to 12 so at one feet one foot away it'll check uh, well, like 12 inches away it'll check about yeah it's a one inch spot and then as you as you double your distance the spot distance um, goes up by a ratio of 12 so anyway you can see the reading here as it's moving you see the in the lower right hand corner it's showing the max setting now if I had it switched to minimum you could get the minimum setting or it'll even show the average or the difference but it, it defaults to max I'm showing you how that works and you know go to different surface right now it's obviously a pretty even temperature here and that's how that goes. I'll go ahead and shut it off and then I'll show you one last thing. If you do use one of these types of thermometers, you want to get this uh, thing here. Uh, you can find these all over the web. It's just a table of total emissivity and uh, it's designed, it's published specifically for these types of thermometers, not just the Fluke, but really any type of infrared thermometer and it's got emissivities for just about anything you could think of and uh, that come in handy, especially for guys working on HVAC equipment, uh, guys working in power plants, um, things of that sort, so that you know what the temperature is. And it's got all the, the numbers you'd want to switch your emissivity to on the uh, thermometer to check. And uh, so you can find these just about anywhere. And uh, just look up emissivity table. That's the best way to search for them. And uh, that's it. And this thing works pretty well. I'm going to be using it for a few other things around the house. So. Uh, Thanks a lot for watching.